Well, if, if you're the only one, it's about to be a very one on one session for you. So, would you be able to see the top lady? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, you know, it's kind of some context there. Yeah, pretty much. So, like, showing how to make these smart tokens. So, um, so high level, right? Um, were you able to see the talk earlier that day? No. Okay, so good. So some little context and what else? So so high level. First off, thanks for being sitting down. Appreciate it. There's a lot of stuff going on. The last talk of the day. You guys don't have to be here, so I actually can't really appreciate it. Yeah. Hopefully, I can give you some value. Okay, and feel free to interrupt me at any point in time. All that stuff. Um, so high level deals. I just showed this side. Okay. So. The first principle So how does it look? For Corium, what we do is Wi-Fi uh, Yeah, I just did a high spot. It's probably um okay so so high level though for Corium and you know I have to say this the language on this site here Take this enterprise grade from what the brand saw, right? That in the end, the end result of what I'm going to show you it allows for a little bit more, a lot more reliability. And you know, with organizations, they don't want any risk, right? So, in the, the end result is organizations, big and small, find this useful, right? But you know, uh, I think for a long time the company was focused on enterprise grade, but I think that. We're making a slight switch. Not that we're forgetting enterprise people, but we meet way more people who aren't enterprise, right? And that they really used to. So, so high level though, and I don't want to show that. I want to take it down because there's you know, we're going to start from scratch. So, high level though, with Corium, what we've done, obviously we built it on Cosmos, but what we've done is we've taken fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens, and we made them first class citizens in the protocol. So it's the, obviously you can make both asset types in Cosmos. But we made it where now the asset types are built into the protocol. So when you make them, it inherits all of this foundational logic. So you don't have to implement it yourself. Okay, that, that's just that's a very high level way of saying it. It'll make more sense as we go through it. Um, but, you know, and I can talk about the modules that we made on top of it. Um, and I'll kind of show you that as we go. But I want to keep it very hands on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this code and I'm going to put it in a repo on our. Um, organization and GitHub, so that you can just go play with it, right? But we do have a tutorial that kind of shows you how to do this, it's just you gotta do it yourself, right? Um, and what I did here is I pretty much, this make file here is pretty much automating everything for you, because we have like a daemon that you run that simulates a local node on your computer, so that you can interact with it, right? So, but anyway, okay. So like I said, we have these first class prints, these first class citizens for fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens. So. What I'm going to show you is how do you programmatically make a, a fungible token in this case. But the approach is the same as that thing for non-fungible. Um, and then another thing I will say is um, following these steps, you should be able to recreate this on your machine. And if not, just reach out to us and we'll help you with that. Right? Um, okay. So I have never written a Cosmos on this part, to be honest. Good. I'm so glad everybody asked. So now I'm going to have to, you're going to see how similar it is by building um, smart tokens, it's the same exact approach as building any type of cosmos contract. It's just now you have some guarantees on the box. Okay. And you guys can see this code, right? Is this not too small? Okay. So first thing, and I hate the fact that I have a mic, right? So um, and I know it's, it's for them, but you guys hear me? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just start the. This is this is our our. It's a daemon. It's pretty much running in a, in a container. But this is this is an, uh, a node that's running on your local machine. So now you can everything you're doing here, you should be able to do on any mainnet. So okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it up. And boom! Now it's running. Okay. So now the way that I'm gonna interface with it is. D. This is just an instance, so I'm um, pending um, zero zero. Check the stats. Okay. So we know it's running now. Perfect. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do port D. And first thing is what I want to do is let's look at the accounts that are available in the Linux session. So we'll do port D, keys, list. So here we see three addresses, right? We see Alice, Bob, uh, Charlie. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new wallet for ourselves. So we can actually you know, do some work. So we're going to do core, core D, keys, add. And we're going to just call it dev wallet for now. Okay, dev wallet. Here we go. So now we have our dev wallet up. If we run this keys list again, now we see we have our dev wallet. Okay, our dev wallet is broke right now. Let's give it some quick funds so that we can actually deploy a contract. And I'll walk you through the, what the contract is doing. Um, I'm, uh, so no worries. And I'm going to have to do it on my mind because all of you have done Cosmologic stuff, so I can actually be faster than that. So, let's give our wallet some uh, tokens, some native tokens. So, for D, zero, zero, we're going to do, we're going to call the transaction module, actually no, yeah, transaction, bank module, that you send from Aris, and we're going to give it to our dev wallet, and then we're going to just send us some like a million native tokens. So similar on any Cosmos, uh, Cosmos wasn't chain, you're just going to be on denoting your denomination, your suffix. So again, the last thing we're going to do, broadcast on the whole, block. This, this is just, you know, providing, it's async quality. Broadcast, yeah. You know, yes. Okay, so now uh, let's do keys list again, and we're going to do this to make sure our thing has some funds now. We query, bank, balances. So, boom. so now we have some tokens. All right. So let's close this real quick and let's look at the actual contract. Okay, so. So all, all of these make sense to everybody. Like, these are pretty standard stuff, right? The only thing. Here we're um, we're bringing in a specific struct that we made, and that struct is an RMS. Is here. This is a very basic struct. This is just going to hold um, a mount that we're going to return later. So just keep that in mind. Um, now these are specific to Quark. So here we're bringing in this one asset FT, and this is, you can do the same thing for NFT. And here we're just bringing in some, you know, some structs, right? Just query messages and queries so that we can define how we're talking to the actual chain and how we're um, getting data from the chain. These are all standard, but I'm sure you guys have seen these before. Yeah, okay, good. Um, this is the last thing that we're importing here. This is just custom state. And you guys know what Cosmo Muslim, you're defining your state to be, you know, what is your app care about? What is your contract care about? So, here we care about the store owner, the store denomination, the store airdrop amount, and the store minted for airdrop. Actually, we make this a context. So what this is going to do is we're we're going to mint tokens and we're going to airdrop token. Very simple. But because you guys are all Cosmos and nerds, you can extend this to whatever you want. Okay. Let's go back. All right. Perfect. So you know this is this is newer. Um, Cosmo, uh, Cosmosm, or Cosmos SDK, SDK stuff, and Cosmosm stuff with like the contract version and the contract name that wasn't always there, but it's required now. Um, everybody here familiar with Rust, for sure, so I don't have to explain what these compiler directors do. All they do for people in the internet world. All these are doing here is they just pretty much force these tricks to be implemented on these following structs. This right here is going, when we actually generate these JSON files, this Snake case is going to convert this to all lowercase with um, underscores between it. So here's our instantiate message. This is custom, right? So you set this yourself. So here, to instantiate a contract using this, um, we're going to pass a symbol, a subunit, precision, the initial amount, and an airdrop amount. And it will make sense of that. Image. Here we're just defining our errors, right? Uh, you know, it's a custom error that's causing lots of stuff. We kind of have to go over that a bit. Uh, see, here's our execute message. So this right here is important. Obviously, you guys know. Here, we're just allowing ourselves to invoke mint for airdrop, which is actually going to mint more tokens to later be airdrop. And then this received airdrop just disperses them. And just for this toy example, 
the received airdrop is going to disperse them to the center. Uh, dead lock. So here, this is just in our execute function. Here we have this match, uh, this match statement. If it's a mid for airdrop, we're going to call this function. If it's a receive for airdrop, we're going to call this function. Super basic stuff. For Cosmos, because if you didn't know, then I have to spend time. What is a match? So, you know, so, yeah. so here's our query, right? If we create for a token, we're going to call this. If we create for a mid for airdrop, we're going to call this. Okay. So here's our okay. first important thing. Here's our instantiate function. Let's take a look at it. So, you guys know when you store your WASM contract on chain, it's just stored there, right? But it's only live when you instantiate it. And every time you instantiate it, you get a new contract. It's very basic stuff. Um, so, these are basic, right? It's just mutable uh, dependencies, the environment, access to the environment, access to the info on the chain. And then this is the instantiate message that we send. And this, this obviously maps to the message that we define up here, which is this custom structure. Okay. So, here we're setting contract errors and basic stuff. This is, this, is, this is the first place where we're actually making a smart token. And you're going to see, and just, and just take a look at this. You guys are all developers, right? So, here we're just invoking the asset FT. And here we're using this uh, issue struct. And we're setting these parameters, right? So, we're setting the, the symbol um, that's coming from our uh, one of our parameters. Same thing with subunit, precision, and initial model. This is Blink, so don't kind of worry about that right now. This is the first thing that you guys to care about. So we talk about these built-in features for smart assets. Here, you're passing in a list, an array of, um, of numbers. And this right here is, you see this little comment here is saying, zero is represented minting. So on this, I'm telling it enable mintability. This, I think we have six different features so far. And we're adding more with time on our roadmap. But every single feature that I enable in this features um, uh, field, that's going to enable all of the default logic that I've been talking about all day. Um, this is, obviously, we're setting up burn rate to zero. We don't know what burn it is, right? But, you know, destroying tokens. Um, so, but the key thing to keep in mind here is, this is built-in functionality, right? So if I'm burning and I send tokens, if I send smart tokens, this is burning from my address, right? Keep that in mind. Now this commission, um, we're actually using this, and you'll, there's a last test that I'll show you how this works. The commission is if I'm sending one token, it's gonna add a fee in my smart token on top of that, and then that fee is gonna go to the issuer of the actual asset, which in this case is gonna be our contract. Okay, and this, this is our denomination, it's the concatenation of subunit and contract address. That ensures that it is unique, it's very important. And here's our initial state. And, and the rest of this stuff is really just causing while we start. Right? So I'm not going to go too deep into it, but we're setting our initial state, our owner, our denomination, this is a struct, right? So our denomination, um, minted for airdrop, and our airdrop model. These are just initial values. Here we saved it, and then here we're just constructing the response. Super easy. So, um, let's see. Okay, so here, this is another function that we were going to call, and we talked about how that match statement is going to map to this. So, here, what we're going to do is we're going to load the state, and in Solidity World, this would be this would be analogous to our require statement, right? We only want the the owner to be able to mint more tokens for the airdrop, obviously. But this could be whatever we want here. We're invoking this asset FT again, and we're using this abstraction, this coin, and so we're actually minting more coins here. And this is just built in, and this will fail if you don't enable mintability, right? But if you enable mintability, then you can actually. Um, so here we're just adding to this value. This, you know, in in Cosmos land, right? If this failed, everything in blockchain, like this failed, everything will fail. So you don't have to worry about as much the order here, but given certain situations you do have to worry about that board rigor, like that whole paradigm of like make changes, then commit them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so here we're just constructing our response, save and state here. Yeah, sure. Um, so you have the address in the boundaries. So it's not sending it, it's sending to the protocol, like the message. Yeah, so this mint is just creating new tokens. The receive airdrop is when we actually do the send. You see what I'm saying? 
So yeah, you see that this is literally just venting in here, and we're at we're this and what you could do here instead of hard coding adding this, you could do it another way. But all this is showing is that we're minting and then we're keeping a static representation of how many tokens we have minted. Because later on, we're going to query this to see how many tokens there have been minted already. Right? So super basic, right? But you could do this a number of other ways, just as, as a toy example. Right? Make sense? Okay. But then after that, we're just saving it and then construct the response. Super easy. Okay, we're almost done here with the, the contract. Here we're going to do our receive airdrop. All this is going to do, load the state. We have the simple condition here to make sure that the minted, the amount minted is less than the airdrop amount, just so you don't airdrop more token than you have. Um, now we're actually doing the send, which is what you were asking about, right? So, but you see, this is just a Cosmos and Bank send, you see? Um, so sending it to the sender and then the amount, which is using this coin struct, here's the amount, here's the denomination, which should be easy. But then here, we're just subtracting it, right? Um, subtracting it from our minted for airdrop amount, saving the state, constructing the response. No questions, right? Super, super easy. Any questions? Yeah. It's, it's big send. Yeah, for, for the smart token. So not the, not the native token, but for the smart token. And then, that's actually a good point because the point here is that they're behaving like native tokens in general. But it's because you use our abstraction from our SDK, because you note know, back up here, we have our own SDK, it's pretty much a wrapper around Cosmos and SDK, but that shows this, that provides the support for the smart tokens. See? And keep interrupting the question, no, don't worry. Um, so, yeah, so we're treating it like a native token. Let's see, okay. So, here's our queries, right? This is just getting. Um, we're loading the state here, right? Then here we're just you know creating this abstract this struct, this abstraction with this denomination, and here this is the result that we're querying, um, and then we're just returning it. This is actually really good. So almost done here. I'm not going to go over the test because those are just for sanity check. This is the last function here. Minted for airdrop. This is another query. It's just going to remember that struct that we made earlier, the amount response at the top. This is just going to return that. It should be easy, but it's going to reference the state only. Simple. Okay. So now let's actually see things in action. So the first thing that we're going to do so we have money now. And when you get this code, you'll see some of these commands are a little bit lengthy, and so that's why the make file is there. But so first, let's deploy the code. So let's do make deploy. Oops. No, let's see. Oh, let's see. So now we just deployed this onto chain. So if we look at the deploy stage here. So we, we, I'm going to minimize the code in there that's been with the, what I'm doing on the map. So here I'm invoking a core D of my local node, the transaction module, WASM, store. Here's the artifact that's, I should say this, here's the build stage that we have. I didn't run it because it would take like 15 minutes to run. So, but if we look at the, the folder directory, this is that WASM file that's produced after I do my build. Super basic Cosmos. Okay, so I'm storing that on chain from my dev wallet. Um, automate, automated gas oil calculation, my gas adjustment, all yeses, what type of broadcast mode, output is JSON, my Corium node arguments, that's, I can actually show you what that is here. Right here, so I'm just saying, here's my node endpoint, here's my chain ID, super easy. Make sense? Okay. So, if we look at the bottom here, we see that this is successful because we have a code ID. And this code ID in Cosmos and Land is always unique. Should be. Um, all right. So our next stage now, after we deploy it, what's the next stage we have to do? What kind of Cosmos and Land? Okay. Well, first, let's check, right? I mean, and obviously, this, this, this is a sanity check right here, but as a check stage on here, we're going to have to use this one. Okay. So now, Let's do our instantiation. And we'll walk through. 
I mean, honestly, you guys already know how to do that. So we don't have to walk through it. But for people in Team Healing, let's do it. Oh, let me get myself more punts. So go. Okay. Go. Here we go. So now we instantiate. So now we actually have the contract lock. So what we can do is I can do make it's actually in these logs. I'm just gonna get it the normal way. Let's just say make contract address. Well, so now here's my contract address. This is gonna be super important. So what, I, what I've done in the make file, and it's actually not the most ideal way, but you know, I'm kind of working this in a little bit of short time. So I just pretty much have this uh, variable up here where I put the new uh, contract just to make it a little simpler. So, all right. So now we have our contract up there, and we have our contract address. So let's actually check total supply. Let's say make. Just a copy. Make token total supply. This is going to show us how much of the total supply of our smart, to smart tokens do we actually have. And this is what we set in our free ratio. Okay. So here we also query token metadata. All right, so let's just do make token metadata. So we have our awesome ones on coin, our awesome coin. I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy, so I use Gil all the time just for you know, uh, nerdy reasons. But this denomination should always be contract address as a suffix, and uh, you know, it's at least this part is arbitrary. Okay. All right. So now we know that our, our contract is live. We, we already checked total supply. We checked the metadata. So this is the last thing for checks. Let's do. Oops. Let's do make asset NFT. So this is just our send permission rate. Right? Well, I'll show you how that works later. Zero burn rate, description, right? But this is important too. So this is going to list to you your features that you made, right? So it is going to inherit all of this logic out the, out the gate. Another feature we have is like, can you freeze like addresses and stuff like that? Like, you know, just a, a bunch of interesting stuff that you would have to implement yourself anyways. So box for you, you know, and uh, etc. Okay, so let's make more tokens. So I'm actually going to run this again, this make total token supply. We're going to see what's done here. So let's make more tokens. So let's invoke this. Oops. Make drop. Go. So now we minted this many. So now let's actually check to see that number should be bigger. And it is. So now we're actually minting more tokens. Okay. And let's actually do it. So now we see this one. Okay. So now let's actually let's let's do one thing. Let's let's look at the value. Well, at this point, nobody has token. Nobody has the smart tokens, but this contract. Okay. So if we did, if we check the balances for Atlas, if we bought and tried to get a wallet, it would all say zero for it. Um, but let's say if we do, let's say if we do forty. Let's get our time of contract address. So now let's, let's actually check the smart token or the balance in general of this contract. And we should see our smart token as a free balance. Say again. So see, our contract has these tokens, and it's treated as a balance, as a fungible token balance, which is the point this week. So now let's do receive airdrops. And I don't have to, like when I did mid for airdrop, I don't have to show you guys what the struggle is. It's just, it's just that basic structure we made. I love the fact that you guys are right now. It makes it so Okay. Just to receive airdrop. Boom, it, it ran. Let's look at the balance sheet contract again. Now it's changed because I sent tokens to the sender of that last transaction. So now let's look at let's look at how much let's look at the balance of my debt. Right, so 4D query. Right, 
Or the very All right. So now you see, now we have our Final Fantasy and Austin awesome film we did. But it's treated as a fungible token. And the, the same approach you would do for NFTs. It will be treated as a raw NFT of cosmic NFTs. Okay. So, let's see. So, now I showed you the printing for the airdrop. I have the function called and receive airdrop. Um, and here, you know, this is just not a very Here, which is like checking, it's a query to check the airdrop amount, which is at, at the end of the day, that's going to use this struct right here that we already defined. Right? But it's going to return that to me like this. Right? So it's the same exact struct. Okay, so this last part to show you, let's check the permission test itself. So remember, with permissions on send, oh, well, let's just look at the, the stage here. So with permissions, all we're doing is calling the bank module and send from our dev wallet to Alice. And that's key. So first, before we do that, let's do list again, and let's look at Alice Lily's address. So we're going to port me 00. And actually, we're, we're literally going to port me 00. And it's already been So let's do port me 00. We're going to query bank module. Balances. Alice has no Final Fantasy awesome folks. So now what we're going to do is we're going to send money from the dev wallet to Adra to Alice. But we're also going to see that the contract gets the commission. Okay. Yeah. And so also we can see the contract address. So now. Let's just make sure that we verify what this is on. We'll check the balance of the contract. Just keep that in mind to see the difference. So, okay, so this is 199 and five squares. So, now we're going to do this stage, this commission test. So, we're going to do make commission test. Okay, so, that, so now let's look at the balance that point. They got the commission, even though we sent it from the dev wallet to add Alice, that built-in commission has now been sent to the contract. And that's just by us enabling that. You see? So uh, traditionally you would have to implement that logic or something. And over time, you know, we're making more asset types, but because if you saw that talk earlier, we talked about the proliferation of ERC 721s and 20s, that's that's the majority where everybody uses anyway. So just implementing those and are providing those to users. We've seen people be able to make these type of applications like this out the box without having to write their own permission logic, variable vulnerability logic, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, but this last part at the end of the day, just to recap, we sent tokens from Dev Wallet to Alice, and then our smart contract or our smart token gets the permission. Makes sense. Okay. And so just to leave you with this. Half an hour went by really quick, guys, but I appreciate you guys staying, and I also appreciate your knowledge, so I don't have to tell you what a match statement is, right? So I appreciate that. Um, but just to go back to this, um, let's look at the function real quick. Well, what we made in our instantiation, where is that instantiation? Here we go. All we did was just make sure that we define this to be not zero, and it always works out the box. So when we look at, um, let's go back to the Receive airdrop, right? This, like I said, worked the same way we expected it because we use this bank send. Um, and we'll, so we'll make this open source for you guys, but really these tests down here for you to verify to yourself is working the way that you expect, right? There's nothing really crazy here. But that, and this is the last thing I'll say. So if you go back to the instantiation here, remember. This to me is the most important line in this whole contract. Because actually this is 92 to 100 because this is where you're defining your out the box logic that will just work for you like we did with set permission. So if we would have put zero, comma one, comma two, we would have enabled burnability, freezeability, right? And you can enable whitelisting and blacklisting out the box. You don't have to write that logic yourself. But super basic contract, showing you how to implement smart tokens, just a fungible token type. 
If you want to, try. we have a tutorial for the NFT types as well, super basic, and it will show you the same type of thing. But remember, because this is a Cosmic Balls level contract, I don't have to tell you guys this, but I'll say it for the internet world, this can be whatever the hell you want it to be, right? As long as we give you this out-the-box functionality so that you don't have to worry about, oh my God, is my commission logic right? Is my burnability um, logic right? This should hopefully, ideally, make let you move faster. So, Hopefully, this is valuable to you. Hopefully, it demystifies the smart token thing to being, hey, there's some given logic that has already been tested and implemented that we're now inherited from, and hopefully, you can move faster. If you can't move faster, we're not doing our job right, but hopefully, this shows you it's not rocket science. You guys are making no cosmosm. This should be easy for you to pick up. So, the last thing I'll say is, I said this earlier, but we have a very interesting grant program and me and my business partner there are in charge of the grant program. So if you guys are building anything interesting or you have something built already, if you're open to incorporating Corium meaningfully, you know, let us help you get to where you're trying to go. So hopefully keep that in the back of your mind, right? But, you know, give us your feedback if you ever test this out. And, you know, thank you for staying. I appreciate it. Any, any last questions for you guys? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the cool thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the cool thing because typically, if you've, if you've written them before, you know that royalty logic can be tricky and it can be very bug prone. Um, especially the perpetual royalty, like the first seller, 10 orders down, right? Yeah. So. But that right there, and you know, you can extend it, right? But the cool thing is, we spent a lot of time to make sure that these features work for both, which is cool. Burnability, feasibility, all that stuff. So, you know, and out the box. So, and our last thing I'll say too, if you have ideas on extra features you will have to see, please let us know. We're really responsive to devs and, you know, we build stuff pretty quickly. So, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. What's your name? What is it? My pleasure, Giovanni. They'll see. Giovanni, pleasure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, pleasure. Actually, I actually have a cousin name over here. Ladies, pleasure, Giovanni. Thank you for I really do mean it. Thank you for staying. You do not have to be here. It's the last talk. I truly appreciate you. And hopefully, you learned something. Okay, hope I'm going to stop. Thank you so much for staying with us. Have, have a great rest of the day. Hopefully, I see you at the after party. And if yeah. you want to pick my friend later, please do it. It'll be fun to do. Okay. Awesome. Hey, awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah.